Yo, bye guys, uh, welcome back. Today's video is going to be sort of how I came into the trade, why I came into the trade, uh, the ups and the downs of being self-employed and at a point of wanting to quit and applying for another job, to finding the love for work again and YouTube and yeah, the story of literally my life the past 10 years. I'll skip out all the boring bits, don't worry. So it's a key point I heard from someone recently, it's really good to look back at where you were to see how far you've come. I know it sounds a bit one of them, one of them quotes you see on someone's bedroom walls, but it's a really big thing in my life to where I am and what I've achieved so far with doing what I'm doing because realistically, if I'd have gone back even three years before I started doing YouTube, I was at probably the lowest point in my life uh, with work, with family life, with a lot of things going on. Um, but we'll get to that, we will get to that. So we rewind because last time I did how I got into the trade video was I think my fifth or sixth video ever and I've got like 127 videos out, something like that by now. Um, also ignore the noise in the background. I'm in the unit and someone's alarm keeps going off and it's really annoying so just try and bleep it out. I'll try and skip it as and where I can. So rewind. I'm leaving school. So leaving school, I wanted to be a carpenter. My granddad was a carpenter. My dad was a sub boy painter, decorator. I did carpentry with my granddad at the weekends. Found it really interesting. Always wanted to be a trade. I'm not massively academic. I am dyslexic. I don't really like reading and writing <laughs> at all. I struggle with it. And uh, so I went to the open day, went to be a carpenter. And by chance, the lecturer, Rob, Rob watches these, uh, was next to us. And uh, the carpentry guy says, oh, you got good grades, go and have a word with the, the, the Sparks next door. Went out a word with them, all of a sudden I was signed up on, and that was it really. So signed up and it was a three year course, level one, two, level two, level one, level two and level three. So they were across three years, two and a half days a week and I made some friends at college and throughout the whole course of college I was one of the only lucky ones because my dad was already in the trades. I managed to jump on with a few of the Sparks. So I was a domestic one, Tim, who still great friends with, he lives in Stafford as well. Hi Tim. Uh, Tim was a domestic spot, he sh showed me a lot. Uh, then I jumped over to another company, the other next town along, which did agricultural, industrial, a bit commercial, and some domestic. And this is one of the key reasons I treat Adam so well, because you treat how you want to be you treat someone how you want to be treated. And I wasn't treated very well at all, to be fair. And I've seen and no, we're not horrible, but just not valued as a person. And uh, I detested it, so once I left that, I managed to jump on with a big firm that was doing this uh, council buildings in Stafford, um, all the three-phase stuff, all that sort of stuff, so I jumped on that, and it, towards the end uh, of the thing, I became qualified, or qualified as some of you may say, and um, at this point, it was either, they offered me a job to go to the next city along, which I wasn't really interested in, my dad was like, you live at home, you've got no overhead, you've got no mortgage, you've got no family, the only thing you pay for is your fuel, and your, obviously your vehicle and your phone bill. So at this point I had to already be self-employed to subcontract for this firm, so technically I was already self-employed. So he was like, you know, start advertising. He passed me a bit of work and I signed up with Napier and did all that sort of stuff and went on from there really. And unfortunately the pitfalls have been too young to be self-employed, 100% too young. A um, few things, time management, punctuality, um, not really having to earn your money for anything, any reason in particular other than to fill your pocket really because at that mind frame then I, didn't, I wasn't saying for a house, I wasn't really in my head doing anything with anything, it was just beer money as 18 year old lads, 19 year old lads were. Um, so I, I did struggle to start with to have a good customer base where they could trust me because there was phone calls that was never returned, texts never replied to, emails never returned. And unfortunately, I see that now, and it was, looking back, it's embarrassing, but I had to make the mistakes to learn from them, and that's one of the key things that I've learned now is, and I say to Adam time and time again, I let him make the mistakes, because once he's made them, fingers crossed he won't do it again. You've got to make these mistakes, especially in our trade, especially being self-employed, and especially at a young age as well. So from doing this quite a while, couple of, you know, a good couple of years really, at my age, a young age, uh, sort of into the 20s, I pull my finger really, out where it was and started trying and trying and advertising and taking a bit more pride in my work and really trying to branch out to the next level of things really. 
and uh, it worked well, you know, I enjoyed it with my dad every now and then because he was self-employed and we had the same jobs. <laughs> Didn't quite work as well as he thought because he was trying to tell me what to do and I was trying to tell him what to do. Anyway, so then I sort of plodded with being an electrician for the next six, seven years sort of thing until about, I'd say four years ago really, I, I, I was doing well. I was in, oh, please stop beeping, please. So then after like four years ago, round about that, I, I was getting somewhere, I was enjoying work, I was really trying and wanted to succeed. I had met my other half, we had a family and I was, I had a mortgage, you know, I had a lot of overheads and I wanted to be better and do better. So trying to get more working, trying to complete more stuff, trying to earn as much money as possible for my family to get bigger and better things as we all do as, you know, a father. And uh, sounds weird. I still think I'm a kid, to be honest. But um, then, sort of tragedy struck in my uh, struck in my family, where um, my dad was diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer. So we had to um, go through all of that, you know, the treatment and everything, and then inevitably, unfortunately, passed away nine months later. Then he, you know, he was given a year and. Anyway, yeah, uh, I've gone through a video before with this, but it, it, it shook me. My dad was always the one where I would look up to and he was another tradesman. So whenever I did stuff at work or I was proud of something, I would show him pictures and he would get it. Like he knew the ins and the outs, even though it wasn't a spark, he knew how much effort things took. And, and I was showing him you know, how much money I got paid per month and, and my paperwork that I'd been doing. And, and equally my mum, my mum helped me from day one my paperwork. And when I got to a point where I was self-sufficient and started doing my own stuff, this is back in the day when everything was paper copy, I was really proud of myself. And then when I lost my dad, I just sort of lost my sense of way. I didn't really have someone to show my work off to. Like, it was, it was, this is before I did Instagram or anything like that. So it wasn't, I could take a picture and it was just like, I was then lonely in the world of being self-employed because I didn't have that person to show my work off. Like, I didn't have anyone to say, oh, I'm proud of you, like, I, good job, it was just on me. And then I, I struggled to learn to do stuff for myself. I know I was doing it for money and for my family, but it's a weird mind frame, I know, but it was, I found it very difficult. And then, uh, what was it? Two months after my daughter was then born, um, and at this point, I, I, I hated going to work already. You know, I just didn't enjoy it. I was just trying to get back in the swing of things. And as soon as she was born, it was like a kick up the arse. It was like, right, yeah, get things done. Um, I think I had three days off until I was then back at work because I had to be. You know, I was, maternity pay was not very good for my other half. So three days off. And I fought for it. Like, I, I, in my head, it was go to work, make your dad proud in the way you can. You know, people say, oh, he's always watching. Whether you believe that or not, or I believe that, I don't know, but it was, go for it, you know, give it your all, make your family proud, and I sort of realised at that point in my life, it was, I need to make myself proud, I need to look at what I'm doing and taking a step back and admiring what I've done, rather than take a picture of it and try and show someone. Um, yeah, and then life went on for a bit, and then unfortunately, that November, um, I found one of my best friends, actually took his own life, um, which was just, I've, it's hard to even comprehend what went through my head at that point, I'm trying to, um, trying to juggle emotions and, and, and be normal for the family and his family and work friends and I don't know, it's, it's it, this is a long, it's four years ago, end of this year and it was such a a weird headspace to be in because I, I don't know I can't even explain it properly I've had this conversation hundreds of times now to customers or, or to friends and family or on the podcasts or on the YouTube video I did a couple of years ago even still to this day I, it affects me like I said to you and you guys last year video I just I had a panic attack out of absolutely nowhere because I saw a coat hanging up and it just reminded me of what I saw and what I found. And I don't think I'll ever come over it. And a lot of people said, you know, you've got PTSD from it. I've been and seen people and I've, and I've done stuff, but it'll always be lurking in the back of your head. And it's just one of them. But the anger was the worst part. The worst part why someone that you loved and cared about 
would do that. But then having to figure out in my head of what the whole situation was and, and, and what he went through and this, that and the other. And I came to terms with it. I, can't, I had peace with it. But equally still, it's, I've lost a friend, a very dear friend to me. My, my daughter's godfather. We had asked him weeks before. And it was very difficult, very difficult to put it in my head of what had happened and life has to go on. Because that's what my dad always says to me. When I, when I die, the world doesn't stop spinning. Everyone carries on as normal. It, it's, and that's the way it is. People live, people die. And I get that. But trying to put that in your own head when your dad has just said that and then passed away two days later, it was very messed up in my head. I, I didn't know what to say or do or think, but I put a brave face on, smiled to everyone and carried on as normal because that's what men do. But we're all guilty of it and that's it. Um, and it was that was that year just well and truly messed me up because my mate's funeral was on a Friday and then my brother's wedding was on the Saturday the next day and trying to put together in my head what happened but be happy for other people was very difficult, very, very difficult. And uh, it messed me up, it did. I, I absolutely detested working by myself, a full stop. I hated my own company. I couldn't stop thinking about everything constantly. I remember one of the little stories I don't think I've ever really told anyone. It was two, three weeks after my friend had passed away, I went to work and a customer had left me in the house all day. Um, they'd been out and said, we'll be back in five hours or whatever, brilliant. And uh, it was only 10 minutes gone past and they'd left a set of keys or something on the side, I can't remember now. And they came back in and made me jump and I had an absolute meltdown in front of the customer. Um, I just, it, anything that made me jump at that time, and even to press tape sometimes was something makes me go. I, whoa, I can feel my, the, the, I wouldn't say the attack, but the loss of breath starting. Anyway, this then snowballed on with not wanting to go to work, not answering the phone to customers, not answering emails again, um, actively avoiding uh, customers and not answering any sort of communication and not turning up at jobs. Because, and it looked so bad on my part. And, it, and I look back at now and I was ashamed to say, but equally I know I'm only human. There's only so much I could take and vent off at the same time, but still try and act normal and be there for your family and your kids and your friends. Um, everyone was very supportive of myself um, at the time, but there's only so much healing people can do for you without you actually having to heal yourself. And I'm not trying to preach like I'm sort of got it at all because I'm still struggling now with the whole situation. But I think once you can get it in your head that what's happened, not why it's happened because I don't know, but move on with your life and keep them happy memories there and um, but at that time I struggled I, I couldn't I couldn't do it I, I just I know I it's very difficult I don't really talk about my feelings very often and I try to to you guys because I think it's important that people hear it because a lot of people were like me and just don't say anything and then it made me ill um, you know I wouldn't say I was depressed but it probably was going that way, and I agree it was. Um, and I just couldn't get it out of my head. And it was a point where I got so sick of phone calls, emails, texts, uh, paperwork, invoices, quotes, uh, accounts, certificates. I hated it. I hated it to the point where I actually applied for a job at Sky, and that wasn't even that long ago, uh, to be honest with you. And I, I, I had enough. It was either change the job or I was going to lose the plot. Um, and one day, and this is where it all leads to, I was, money-wise, we were, we were bad. I was having to sell my stuff at home because I was just about paying the bills. You know, baby stuff costs a lot of money, as, as you guys being dads and fathers out there, um, or moms, you know, people watching. It is expensive, and I wasn't having really any income whatsoever. And it was literally that was the lowest point. I, I couldn't afford the bills, I was paying, I was selling my gadgets, stuff that I loved. And you know, I sold my motorbike. I, I just, I couldn't afford to carry on the way I was doing. I had to change. I thought, oh, I saw the job for Sky and I thought, oh, I'll go for it. Um, and it was weirdly at that point when I was down in the dumps massively. I was on Facebook one night and 
I popped up one of the electrician's forums um, on your feed and your Facebook, and one of Chris's videos popped up. I never watched YouTube Spark, didn't know it was a thing at all, didn't know it was a thing. And uh, I watched it and I was like, ah, oh, this is interesting. And I went to the, and obviously from the Facebook one, I then searched him on YouTube, went from YouTube, went through all his videos. I found Dave, I found Nagy, I found Dan, I found, well, pretty much everyone that was a before me sort of thing. I found them all. And I binge watched them all. And I always say, and I've said it on podcasts before, I find it so interesting because I was really only taught from one. I would one proper spark. Tim, the way he taught me is the way I've always done stuff. It worked, why would I ever change? The materials he used, the ones I used, it's worked, why would I ever change? And this is what opened my eyes to looking at other things where manufacturers, different tools, different ways of doing things, different ways of doing fuse boards, using RCBO boards. The list goes on. Like you guys watching me, when people say oh, I've learned this and picked this tip up, I was doing it from that in one night. <laughs> and then it went on and on. And I think it was a couple of weeks went by and I started trying their little techniques and tips and tricks and materials on jobs where I could afford it because I wasn't earning a lot of money and I was like, where and where, where I can lose a couple of quid on a job and get a different material, I'm going to do that. And absolutely out of nowhere I went, I'll, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going, to say, I'm going to do 10 videos. Why and what have I got to lose? 100% what have I got to lose? Because I knew YouTube paid you at some point. I didn't know the ins and the outs. I rarely ever watch YouTube ever anyway. And, um, not to mind the Sparks guys, just YouTube in general. It was My kids watched it and that was about it. And every now and then it was like, how do I put... I don't know. How do I get water mocks off a shower screen? Like You can type into Google and a YouTube video pop up. That sort of stuff. Not that I've ever cleaned a shower screen. Just saying. But um, I thought I'd do 10 videos. I had an old Hero GoPro Hero 3. Thought, well, why not? And then I realized there's an Instagram. Like, you can get a business Instagram. You can get all the people. Those are Sparks putting all stuff online. And I was like, I'll give it a go. <laughs> and um, I set a goal in my head. And this is one of the things that sort of helped me a lot was set goals. Set goals of what you want to do, what you want to achieve with a certain time frame. Don't be over optimist a bit don't cut yourself short because there's a few things where I made a goal and I'd be here within two days sort of thing and then there was a goal that I still haven't achieved to this day three years on or whatever it's been and uh, my mood soon changed and waking up in the morning to go to work I started enjoying it and taking pictures of my work and answering phone calls and emails and texts getting my paperwork done on time um, that was a massive stress where I'd leave my paperwork weeks and weeks and weeks and then it piles up to the point where it becomes a problem and then it's another thing in your head that you constantly think about when you're lying awake in bed when you should have been asleep two hours ago which I'm pretty sure you can all relate to any guys that are self-employed um, so yeah set myself a goal I'm going to do 10 videos no matter if it goes somewhere or it doesn't I'm going to do 10 videos I'm going to see what happens and my goal in my head that I set I would love at some point in a year or two years time to earn £500 a month off YouTube and I want to employ my other half to do my paperwork. That was the plan and that was the goal. It was massively unachievable when I put my first two videos out and realised how slow things could go. But I stuck with it and I made some more stuff. Like I'd never edited a video before, I'm not very good on computers, I've got Apple stuff but no, I know how to use half of it after Adam showed me things that I've had an iPhone for 10 years and didn't know you could do something. Apparently you can change the brightness of your torch. Thanks, Adam. So setting myself an achievable goal at some point was the best thing that I could have done. It helped me mentally. It was something to aim for. It was a goal post to hit, which I'd never really done previously in my life, other than certain things with life in general. But with work, this is what I wanted to do. And from doing YouTube gave me a sense of achievement, um, with Instagram as well because I jumped on Instagram and it was the same thing people showing their work off how to do things tips and tricks and it was a community of sparks that wanted to help each other that I've never had before because the sparks I would say around my area back and way and when you, they were your enemies like no one wanted to get on or talk to you or, or share tips because they were in competition completely different on Instagram I found um, anything you wanted to question with people were there bang straight help you straight away and I thought it was fantastic genuinely thought it was fantastic and my life then opened up from being a little self-employed spark to being able to speak to 
thousands upon thousands of sparks with their knowledge and their intelligence compared to mine went a long way and it gave me that bit more confidence to start trying new things or if I wasn't quite sure, ask a question. Um, and then out of absolutely nowhere, um, one of my videos, I think it was my third video or something like that, uh, hit off. And I, I know Chris, uh, rewind a bit, Chris did give me a shout out when I was at like 950 subs. Chris did a shout out on Instagram for me and, um, and got me to a thousand. And the fact that a thousand people subscribed, no mind just watch, but subscribed to myself that wanted more content was ridiculous. I, it even baffles me now. And I don't want to ever become this big headed person that I, oh, I've got at the present time 42,000 subscribers because still it's overwhelming for me to think that that many people would find myself interesting, to be honest. I, you know, I'm a nice guy, I like to think I'm a nice guy, and I a bit of a laugh every now and then and I enjoy people's company and my main thing I enjoy making people laugh that's what's always I've always found has helped me especially cope with things and it's just this whole world now has opened up to myself and my family where I can interact with you guys and show you guys things that I found years back and I've tried and failed at and I will always show my mistakes which you've seen on my stuff well, it's the real world situation. I'll be as honest as I can with everything, with sponsorships, with tools that I'm using, with the way I do stuff. There's no lies here because what's the point? <laughs> you start lying, people are going to catch you out. But this is the same point. So when I got near enough 10 videos out, when Adam started with me, and then that changed everything again. I started to enjoy work already. I was getting back in the swing of things, you know, getting there with my life. Then Adam come along little angel fell out of the sky I was like oh yeah I'll work with you for free for a bit you know give me some experience and we'll go from there and obviously I'd already known Adam for years since he was born uh, in case any of you guys didn't know like, I, I've known his dad and his mom for years Adam's 11 years younger than me I remember holding him as a baby and his little tiger little uh, orange tigger that was it tigger uh, Winnie the Pooh onesie he was wearing came around my house and he dropped him twice it's fine and um, he started with me and obviously his first enthusiasm straight away of wanting to learn and how to learn and, and it was it was just amazing I'm not going to explain the whole story between me and Adam of how he's grown because you can see it because the first day he was on site properly with me I recorded him up to present time where he now has his own YouTube channel with 7,000 subscribers so he's a good guy we can all see that but from Adam joining me to then having a dynamic between him and myself Adam and I <laughs> I only say that as a joke by the way guys because some people say oh in this situation Nick that wasn't correct it's just a joke so don't worry um, when Adam and I are backwards and forwards he's helping me with the work he's then helping me get more work in to complete it quicker Adam gets paid he's got an apprenticeship for myself he has the best kit I think any apprentice ever has because of YouTube's allowed me this and now I stand sit before you guys two years nearly two years in May from starting this channel I've got more stuff than I ever could dreamed of um, dream of, sorry, I ruined that line, didn't I? I'm sitting in my own industrial unit. I have all this cool stuff behind me. I have the coolest tools around, you know. I've got people approaching me to give me stuff for free. I remember the first, I think I got, the first thing I got for free was a couple of screwdrivers. And I was like, oh my, this is amazing. Someone's giving me screwdrivers for free. Like, what on earth, why would they do that? And I'm, I want to be as humble as possible because I, I still shocked that this has happened I know I've worked hard and I've put a lot of graft in and hours putting videos out and content and editing and filming on site for everyone to see you know I'm opening myself up as much as possible and I'm enjoying every step so far to be honest and it's changed my life completely so much that I enjoy every day going to work you have your bad days everyone has a bad day so once YouTube sort of kicked off and it was going somewhere, obviously started making money off YouTube, either through sponsored videos or from ad revenue, which then allowed me to employ my other half, and she started working for us, doing the paperwork, doing my books, doing my invoices, and uh, all the stuff in the background that we never, I hated. I hated doing it. Uh, but because of that, she started using Tradeify. This is the plug, this is the sponsor bit. Um, but it worked well because I used so much paperwork, paper copies before. I've always been a paperwork person of I have to have it written down and in front of me 
And if you saw my office back in the day, my wall was just littered, and I mean littered in paperwork, sellotape to the wall, blue tack, so I could see visually. That's how I had to do things because I couldn't do it any other way. But since she's jumped on board and I've showed her the Tradeify app, she's got her iPad, I've got it on mine. She books stuff in for me. She speaks to the customers. She sends the invoices out. I then attach from Easy Cert. You can share the file across and attach it to a job so you can send the invoice and the certificate off at the same time, which is bliss, trust me, because it's been a pain in years past. And it's just helped me bump my business and my worth ethic and my organization pretty much to the next level. Thank you to her as well. You've helped. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, genuinely, like I said before, if I wasn't being honest, you guys would know. It's a fantastic app. It saved me a lot of aggro. And especially now when I'm on site where I can leave a job and just click tick, sends the invoice off, sends the certificate straight away from any ICR. That job is then done. I, as I'm driving away, I don't need to speak to that person again. And it's just saved me hours and hours and hours in the evening. More time for uh, editing videos. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to more and more to the future every day, to be honest. And the whole reason for this video is I wanted to show you guys, no matter how crap things are or how bad they look at the time, I didn't see myself becoming where I am. Never in a billion years, if someone had said, oh, you'd be on YouTube with X amount doing this and that, and you'd have a really cool wicked van outside, still wearing a Batman hat. No, no way on this planet would I have thought that was possible. But I've managed to achieve it, and you guys easily could as well. Set yourself goals, um, set yourself something that you want to achieve, aim for it. Uh, the community on Instagram is fantastic. Anything you need, questions, ask. YouTube questions, just ask away. If I can't answer it, someone else will. 100 billion percent. So whatever route you're in, speak to people. Um, there's, there's always a solution to the answer you've got or an issue or a problem, financial stuff. There's that many people to go and speak to and help for any sort of problem. Um, yeah, that's really all I got for you guys. It wasn't a, uh, I hope it didn't come off as a gloating video. That's not what I wanted at all. It was, I was in a bad place. I was in a bad place and I hated everything that I was doing at that time. And I've managed to turn my life around to, I would like to say, well, especially on YouTube, one of the most well-known sparks, obviously on YouTube, around our area. Um, and that many phone calls and messages all the time for people, which I appreciate, and there's a lot of love. There's a few haters. There's always gonna be a hater somewhere. That's fine. Either a hater or a jealous, it's one of them. So I hope you guys sort of, hopefully you're taking something from this. There's, there's always a different way to do stuff. There's always a community either to speak to. There's always someone to speak to about anything that's bugging you or in your head. Go and find that person and speak to them, make yourself feel better, set some goals, achieve them, smash them out of the park. And uh, I hope it all works out for you guys and I will see you on the next one.